G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, dear old Adam, he's taken aim at the DART mission. Well, we know that the DART mission was everything we hoped and knew it would be. Now, Scott Manley's wrap-up of the whole climax of the mission is excellent as always. Thank you, Scott. You rock. Now, Adam, who is really a bit of a fanboy, fell over himself in the rush to debunk this mission. That speaks volumes about how threatened Adam and his little cult feel when they see this sort of pure science happening in reality right in their face. However, Adam produced nothing more than personal incredulity on steroids, misunderstandings galore, and a failure to research just as Adam always does, or doesn't do. Well, you know what I mean. Frankly, his video, it was a big pile of... That is one big pile of shit. The sheer amount of derp that he produced is mind-numbing and glorious to watch. The fact is that the rakes to the face Adam endured are innumerable. So let's count them, shall we? Yeah, let's have a look. So let me set the scene. We're on board NASA's DART probe as it does 14,000 miles an hour through a vacuum on a kamikaze mission hurtling towards an asteroid. We join the action when they're 668 miles away from impact, like I say, doing 14,000 miles an hour. We're going to look at a short clip. and Again, I'm going to highlight the obvious problems. And I'll start with, at a distance, the asteroid or asteroids look like computer graphics. Fail number one, looks like computer graphics, but actually no evidence that they are. Just your gut feeling, hey Adam, and we know we can trust that, hey. Any idea how to prove that they are computer graphics? I don't entirely know exactly what's going on. When the so-called probe gets really close to the asteroid, we get a couple of very clever little cuts, and then the asteroid, which is CGI, then has rocks superimposed onto the face of it. Rocks superimposed? Again, that is just your gut feeling, isn't it, Adam? And absolutely no evidence of that, hey? Absolutely ridiculous. This is supposedly about science, about Earth's defence against asteroids. But as we're about to see, this is nothing more than a charade. Your personal incredulity knows no limits, does it, Adam? And I'm personally incredulous that a grown man like you can have so much personal incredulity. I've got very basic understanding, so you might have to bear with me. So let's join the action. Two, what was it, 668 miles out, doing 14,000 miles an hour. The team is standing, just recognising this moment years in the making. It is really nice to see them relax a little bit, get off from those computers that they've been glued to and just appreciate this moment that's coming. Yeah, and they've earned this. Um, it's just great to see them there. They have indeed earned this moment, and yet I feel Adam, dear boy, is about to take issue with someone else getting off their butts and actually doing some real science. Absolutely ridiculous, and as you can see, the asteroids on our screen look nothing more than old school computer graphics. Why? Because exactly, that's exactly what they are. Again, Adam, it would be nice if you could actually prove a claim you make. It must be fantastic to have gullible minions that just believe any old bit of tosh you toss at them. Now we're going to forward the action a little bit here to near impact. We'll come to about here. Oh my goodness, look at that. Looks like control system settling down, angular rates look really good. I think we're going to get the investigation team some good pictures. Wow. Uh, no, no, come on, we can do better than that. <laughs> You're right, you can do better than that. This is terrible. Uh, she's talking about clapping, you doofus. I don't entirely know exactly what's going on. This is supposed to be about science, where you're travelling at 14,000 miles an hour in a probe, or you, this camera's on a probe that's doing 14,000 miles an hour, that's going to smash, supposedly, into an asteroid, all in the name of science, to see if it can displace or dislodge or have any effect upon this asteroid as part of so-called Globe Earth's defence for future against asteroids. But the silly thing is here, if this was really about science, 
It's very much about science. Now, I'm getting the feeling that Adam is about to make a complete fool of himself yet again. Go on, Adam. Proclaim away. You would have just, you would have used two probes. One, the kamikaze one and another to film this from the side profile where you see all the action taking place and you don't lose your data because your probe's so-called smashed into an asteroid. Well, he did it. What a goose is Adam. The last thing that he said first, let's do that. The kamikaze probe. Well, in case you missed it, it is transmitting pictures as it snaps them, one at a time. So it'll be perfectly fine, well, right up until the moment of impact and after that, yeah, she's not so much. And then there was that first statement. Two probes to film the action? What a good idea, Adam. So good, in fact, I think NASA actually thought of it. And you would have known this if you'd done the slightest bit of research and looked into it even the tiniest bit. And of course, if there was any movement in the asteroid, because of the probe, it would be filmed side on and captured in a scientific manner by the other probe. So you're saying if NASA had images captured from a second probe, you would consider that scientific? Well, great, Adam. Just have a look at this little bit from Scott Manley, a guy who knows what he's talking about. Now, as for the view from the impact site, obviously we couldn't get anything from the parent spacecraft because it crashed into the asteroid and stopped transmitting, but it did carry along a little sidekick called Lichia Cube that was going to do some drive-by shooting off the impact and the images just got released about 20 minutes ago and i fully expect more science to be done with these images but on the bottom on the left that's the main asteroid on the top right that's the moon and you see very quickly the moon as it's hit outshined its parent body and then the debris cloud starts to expand and what i'm seeing here is this is not a simple linear expansion, right? So these lines are not straight. There's dynamics inside, uh, you know, that ejector process here. And I think that just basically shows that this is not a simple body, right? This isn't a spherical cow, as we say, right? When this probe hit the surface and just piled into the object and released all this energy, you're going to get jets of material coming out. And as the material redistributes because of that energy, those jets are going to change direction. And that's my theory as to why we see these structures here. I, I really want to see more and find out more. Of course, the HERA mission will go and see the aftermath as well. But as we're about to see, we don't get any of that, which in itself highlights the absurdity of this, because this is going to supposedly smash into the asteroid at 14,000 miles an hour. Whoopsies. Seems like you're well wrong again, Adam. As we just saw, we did see the big kablooey from the companion spacecraft. You do understand just how wrong you have been here, Adam, don't you? I don't entirely know exactly what's going on. You're not going to get any data regarding whether or not this asteroid moved. Not that this is real anyway, but I'm just taking it, just believing them for a second and still highlighting the absurdity. You know where else you're wrong, Adam? The data. The data on how well this test works doesn't come from the image from DART at all. Have a listen to a person who does actually know what he's talking about and what he has to say on the test data. So anyway, hours after the images started to come down from telescopes all over the world, watching the expanding cloud of dust and debris that had been kicked up by this. Remember, this is a science experiment, and if the difference between science and messing around by blowing up asteroids is writing it down. But it will actually take several weeks to actually get enough orbits in, because how we're going to measure the effectiveness is by how much the period of the orbit changes. We've got a 12-hour orbit that we need to slowly watch the, uh, the orbit come out of phase with its previous motion, and then we'll know just how much the velocity of the asteroid changed. And over the next few days and weeks, we can also expect more results from telescopes. We have this James Webb Space Telescope was watching, and we do have these raw images right now. I expect that we will get these cleaned up and we will get more detail on that debris cloud. I don't entirely know exactly what's going on. There's a delay in communications as well. So by the time this thing smashed into the asteroid, with the delay, you're not going to get any data back. You're certainly, because the craft is smashed to pieces, not going to know or have any ideas about if this made any 
difference to the asteroid moved it in any shape or form whatsoever. Which again, highlights the absurdity of this. And like I've said previously, these NASA engineers, these people who work at NASA, are grown adults whose minds never, ever, ever return from Disney World. Seems these grown adults know a hell of a lot more about orbital mechanics than you do, Adam, old boy. How do you feel now? Every gotcha you have mentioned thus far has been done, and then some. Let's listen to Scott once more explain the science of it while Adam's brain goes kablooey, a bit like Diddy Moon. So this image sequence is from the Atlas Project. That's the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. And that's a series of telescopes around the world which are looking for small, fast-moving asteroids near the Earth. This particular telescope was in South Africa. They have telescopes in Hawaii, but Hawaii, it was daytime, so they couldn't make observations. Anyway, what you're seeing is the fix, the asteroid being tracked by the telescope is fixed in the middle. The stars in the background are moving by. Those are nothing to do with it. But the object, it's brighter afterwards than it is before because there's probably a cloud of debris nearby. The cloud that expands off, you'll notice, expands in one direction because the impact happened on the side. And it forms a shell because the event is short. So the stuff gets thrown off at high speed and then the source of the stuff gets cut off. So you form this sort of wave that goes away and then it dissipates. And this is seen by other observers. This is from the South African Astronomical Observatory, I believe. Uh, again, you, in this case, they're letting the asteroid move through the field of view, but you still see the increase in brightness and the formation of this cloud headed in front of the asteroid's apparent motion. And again, it's important to remember that the object that we are seeing in these photo of these images of the asteroid is mainly the parent body. The moon is much, much smaller and only contributes a very small amount to the brightness. But both of those are outshone by the brightness of this big cloud. And that huge cloud is key to what the DART mission is about. DART is supposed to demonstrate the ability to divert an asteroid. And that stuff blowing off is almost like a rocket plume. It enhances the momentum transfer from that parent uh, spacecraft. And when modeling these kinetic impactors, you have a factor called beta, which says if you have a beta of two, you multiply the momentum transfer by two. So it gets you better momentum transfer. Now, there's a lot of questions as to what this might be. It's a very complex process and there's a lot of unknowns. This is the best way for us to actually get an idea on what it might be. At the B612 event, the founders, Ed Liu and Rusty Schweikert, declared a public wager as to what they believed the numbers would be betting a dinner. Ed thought the numbers would be higher, uh, Rusty thought they would be lower. I'm really fascinated to find out what th they will be. Thanks, Scott. That was an easy to understand summary of the wash up. Adam, you do comprehend what Scott just said, don't you? I've got very basic understanding, so you might have to bear with me. Starting to see those individual boulders there. You can see shadows of right. uh, the various rocks on the surface. Impact. It's amazing, guys. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is unbelievable. Absolute tosh. Computer graphic. Oh, shut up, Adam. You've got nothing. I'm going to hit fast forward on you for just a little bit. Looks to me like we're headed straight in. Fourteen thousand mile an hour. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh my goodness! Imagine how good this would have looked from a side profile, seeing this, capturing all this in all its glory, rather than the tosh we're about to see. Imagine Adam's embarrassment when he learns that they did record the event from side on. Yeah. Seven, oh, six, wow. Five, four, three, two, one. And there's your rocks superimposed onto the CGI asteroid. And that gets these naive individuals, these NASA test engineers, these supposedly intelligent individuals, who, like I said, left their minds and brains at Disneyland when they were kids, because there's no discernment, just gullibility, and the minds of fantasists that rely on data to fulfill their fantasies. Ridiculous. Gosh. Oh, wow. Awaiting visual confirmation. 
No offence, lads. I could do better myself on a free app on my phone, yeah? Like I say, if this was real, you would have filmed this for another probe from the side on, which would have been much more scientific. So, Adam, now that you know it was filmed from side on, will you now admit that it was much more scientific than you can understand? Yes? I don't entirely know exactly what's going on far superior to this footage and of course meant you would have actually got some data because there's no way with a delay if this was real that you'd get any data back about what difference this probe meant hitting this asteroid anyway even if this was real none And that's the confirmation of impact. Billions of dollars, and this is the confirmation of impact. This is what drives people wild in the control room of NASA. And this is how easy it is to fool gullible individuals. Like I said, if this was real, you would have had two probes, one film from the side of this, which would have been the scientific one, while this one would have been the kamikaze one. They didn't do that because it's not about science. It's a charade to fool naive individuals in the NASA control room and even more gullible, naive individuals that actually watch and believe this tosh. Dear, oh dear. Well, what a dirt fest that was. I know most of you are banned by Adam by now, but if there is anyone out there who is not and feels like poking him just a little bit, well, let him know Wally has peer-reviewed him and found him to be a massive fail. He will, of course, delete and block any comments that present actual science to him. This is the way of the echo chamber. Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed this old school Adam Failfest debunk.